Chapter 32 Rhett was working her over when I stole into the room and rushed him. He barely had time to react. I barreled into him head first, and he threw an elbow at me just as my head slammed into his back. Les sank down against the wall. She had bruises on her arms and face. Her blouse was torn in a couple of places. Her eyes were watering and she was grimacing in pain. I had been knocked to the side, but still made contact, which freed her from him. He spun around as I went crashing with my momentum into a photograph of the two of them on a coffee table and a lamp short-circuited as it hit the floor. I fell to the floor, keeping my eyes on my sister, my temperature steadily rising as I saw what he had done. I jumped to my feet, but I was too late. He smacked me down. I hit my head. Back in the club at that very moment, Freddy's lips suffered a tremble as he felt my energy short circuit for a second, so much so that he jumped up from the armchair, causing the girl to spill her fourth Cosmo all over herself. She screamed and was left screaming while very unimportant people gathered round her very unimportant self, all in a highly unimportant scene. Freddie exited. The wet girl became a wet t-shirt contest hosted by one featuring one with accompanying vocal track created, produced, and delivered by one. The club goers experienced a great upswing of affect from the crowd by the impact of an oak tree of a man slamming through carelessly, leaving possibly 10 people laying and writhing in pain in his wake on the dance floor. He shot through anyone between him and the gates. The place was packed. Quite a large debacle. The cryptid saw an opening and swooped out from the shadows and down in the darkness, taking half the light show with them and some bodies beneath bodies in the surge and fight of relative mortals, drunk and intoxicated in the late hour.